Well, hallelujah and hallelujah. Bless the Lord, saints. This is Minister Pat Holmes coming to you again from the secret place. And again, decreeing Jesus is Lord. He is on the throne. We are seated in him in heavenly places. Glory to God. No one will overthrow him. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I speak the blessings of the Lord upon you tonight. I am totally excited about tonight's outline. We're doing things a little bit different tonight, I am going to play a music video that I prepared at the end of this teaching. And the reason being, tonight I want to profile Moses. Tonight's subject is profiling Moses. And I tell you, when we get through this outline, you will be exceedingly blessed because it is right from the word of God. I have been so blessed and so filled and overwhelmed as I have studied out this outline myself. Moses was a powerful man of God. He was known as a prophet and also the lawgiver. I want to put an image of him on the screen Again, we're going to talk about profiling Moses. Oh my goodness. And I tell you, when we get through profiling him, talking about his strength, his relationship with the Lord, glory to God, how God transformed him. As a matter of fact, the name Moses means drawn out. Most of you know the story. He was drawn out of the water, but he was drawn out of himself and transformed, glory to God, in the presence of God. And God stamped him with heaven's blueprint and used him, glory to God, for a mighty assignment on this earth. We are going to teach basically by pictures tonight because it will keep me flowing, glory to God, and I won't get bogged down. We know that we first hear about Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 2. God's chosen people, the Jewish people, were enslaved down in Egypt. Most of us know that. They were being mistreated. They had been mistreated for years. As a matter of fact, they were there 400 years Years. Now, the first few hundred years, they were not mistreated, but when that last Pharaoh came in, oh my God, he was a cruel taskmaster. The people began to cry out to God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says God heard their moanings and groanings. Aren't you glad that we have a God that listens when we cry out? So God raised up the lawgiver, the prophet, the deliverer, and his name was Moses. And we uh, know that Moses' mother, her name was Jochebed. She was down there in Egypt. She was an Egyptian slave also. But listen to what the meaning of her name is God is glory. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you want to live a life that proves God is glory? This woman had to trust God because what happened under that Pharaoh, he sent out the slayers, he sent out those Egyptian soldiers under him to kill all of the male babies that were born. And there was Jochebed, and Moses' mom. She had birthed forth the baby Moses. So she hid him out in her house at risk of losing her own life. The Bible says she knew he was a goodly child. In other words, not only was he a handsome baby, but she knew God had purpose and destiny for her child named Moses. That's something that we need to know even concerning our children. No matter how they're acting up right now, some of them live like they've never heard the name Jesus. But you have to know in your heart that God has a blueprint for your loved one. Glory to God. So she hid that child out and finally it got so risky, we know the story, that she built a little ark and she put that baby in that ark. Here to the left side, you will see a picture of that. That depicts Moses, the baby Moses in the ark. And that depicts his sister Miriam. We know the story. I want to uh, uh, highlight this. The mother, Jochebed, made that little ark out of the Bible says in the King James bulrush. And I looked up bulrush and it is pa papyrus. I can barely say it. Papyrus. 
which is a thick paper, and this is what they would write on. I thought how prophetically interesting that the lawgiver, who would later receive the stones with the word of God engraved in the stone, his little ark would be made out of papyrus, a thick paper that was used for writing. So she made that ark out of that thick paper, and she dabbed it with pitch or with tar and with asphalt, and she put that baby out in the Nile River. I want you mamas to think about that for a while, that you have to put your newborn baby out there in faith, but her name means Jehovah is glory. This woman had a relationship with God, even to move out on an assignment like that with her newborn baby. And Miriam, his older sister, she followed that baby down the side of the Nile River and uh, Pharaoh's daughter, most of you know the story, Pharaoh's daughter came out with her handmaidens and she noticed that baby in that little ark. She noticed the ark. They brought the ark over and when she looked in, there was that Hebrew baby and the Bible says just right away when she looked at that baby, she wanted that baby. We all know that it was the hand and plan of God. God has destiny on our lives. Glory to God. Continue to trust Him no matter what the situation and circumstance looks like. God has it already planned out to bring you victory. So we know that when she saw that child, she decided it was her aunt. And so Miriam, look how sharp Miriam, his sister was. Do you want me to find someone to nurse the baby? And Pharaoh's daughter said yes. So Miriam goes right back, tells her all mother, Jochebed, that uh, the Pharaoh's daughter wants somebody to nurse the baby Moses. And so an agreement was made and that mother took her baby home and she nursed him up until a certain age when she had to turn him back over to Pharaoh's daughter. But don't you know during that time, glory to God, she was speaking into that baby his divine destiny. Even though he would be transferred over into to Pharaoh's house. They did not serve Jehovah God. Oh my goodness. As a matter of fact, Pharaoh thought he himself was God. But Jochebed had had a chance to impart and to teach her baby about his divine destiny, who his he was, and who his God was. We need to take every opportunity to teach our children. Begin teaching them even when they're in the womb, mother, if you know the Lord. Begin to speak the blessing lessons and promises of God over that child even while that baby is in the womb. Glory to God. So we know that Moses came into the house or into the mansion, should I say, of Pharaoh. And the Bible says this, when Moses became grown, one day he went out amongst the people. Now remind you, his people were the Israelites or the Jews, and they were slaves to the Egyptians. Here he is himself, a Hebrew or a Jew, and he is in the house of the people, the Egyptians, that are mistreated and in in his people. And he knew what had already been imparted in him from his mother. See, those people would teach prophecy. They would teach prophetic promises. Glory to God. She would have taught him that God is going to raise up a deliverer. So when Moses was out there, he noticed one of the Egyptian and that Egyptian killed one of the Hebrew slave. And Moses saw it and within his own strength glory to God. Moses tried. Moses killed uh, that Egyptian. He was so upset with what he'd done. I'm trying to find a picture of that. I know I have a picture here somewhere. Let me pull this one up. Yes, over here to the left. It shows that Moses he pulls up that sword and he kills that Egyptian who had killed one of the Hebrew slave. And he hid the Egyptian's body in the sand thinking no one saw him. Well, it was the very next day that he was out amongst the people and two of the Hebrew men were fighting and Moses intervened trying to stop them questioning them why are you fighting each other and one of them said who made you a prince over us you see how the devil can get in people and be so defiant and then he says to him are you going to do to 
me the same thing that you did to that Egyptian man yesterday. And Moses said, oh my goodness, everybody probably knows about this by now. So the picture to the right depicts Moses fleeing from Egypt, fleeing from the palace where he was a prince. Moses had to leave, and the Bible said that Pharaoh sought to kill Moses, so Moses had to go. But all of this was in the plan, the destiny, the profiling of Moses. God was getting ready to make his prince. Pharaoh was calling him a prince, but God was getting ready to make a real prince. We know that Moses left. He went to a place called Media which means strife. There was a lot of strife there. He went to a whale, and there were these seven girls that came to the whale trying to um, water their animals, and the shepherds made the girls leave. They began to call strife with the girls and made them run. When Moses stood up right away, and he took up for those girls so they could water those animals. So the girls went home and told their father, Jethro, we've heard of him, Jethro, another name in the Bible for him is Ruel, told Jethro what had happened at the watering place at the well, how this, they called him an Egyptian. Now Moses was actually a Jew, but he had the attire of the Egyptian. So they said this Egyptian helped us. So Jethro, a Ruel, another name for him, said, where is he? We need to invite him, in other words, to our dinner table. And we know the story. Moses came, and soon after that, he was given uh, one of Jethro's seven daughters, and she is depicted right here to the left, and her name is Zipporah. And I want you to know, she was one of the greatest things that could happen in Moses' life concerning his divine destiny. Got to share something with you so powerful after a while that perhaps you have not seen in the Bible. She saved his life. You see a woman that is in tune to God, glory to God, and a praying woman will stand in the gap and help push her mate, her children, her loved one towards the destiny of God. And that's what Zipporah did. We we know that he was there dwelling with his people and he began to, uh, with, with his new people I should say, he began to take care of Jethro's flocks and one day as depicted at the picture on the bottom to the right he's out there with the flock and the Bible says he went to the backside of the desert and all of a sudden he noticed that there was a bush on fire well that was common in the desert the desert is hot, bushes would catch on fire all the time but what was so interesting about this bush, the fire did not go out. So Moses turned to look at the bush. And the Bible says when God saw, he had his attention that he was looking at the bush. God introduced himself to Moses. He called Moses by name. And I love what Moses answered. Here am I. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to say seal all on that pause and think about it. Here am I. God is calling so many, but many do not slow down to listen, to get in tune with God. Tonight's subject is profiling Moses. So God gets his attention, and of course a conversation starts, and God begins to tell Moses who he is. One of the things that he told Moses that I love, first First of all, he gave him assignment. He said, I'm sending you back to Egypt. And I want you to be the one to lead my people out. He was allowing Moses to know you are the one that I have chosen that will deliver my people. You are the one that will go down into Egypt where my people are enslaved. And you will tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Profiling Moses. This is the same assignment that we all have. Many are bound up in Pharaoh even this day. The gods of this world, bound up in confusion, in church every Sunday, on the bench, but do not really have a relationship with God, do not know how to hear the voice of God, have no hunger to seek after God, have no hunger to read the word of God, have no hunger to prayer and to fast so they can press into his presence. God said, if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw not unto you. So there are many this day, and that is our assignment. But Moses said, here am I. Oh, glory to God.
We know that God continued to talk to Moses. And this one thing he told him that I love. I am the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Where Moses would have known who those patriarchs were, those covenant makers from the days of old, his mom would have taught him that glory to God. And he began to tell him again, when you get down into Egypt, because Moses said, now when I go down there and I meet with the elders, because God had told him to go and meet with the elders, he said, who do I say sent me? And God said, I am that I am. Oh, hallelujah to his holy name tonight. I am that I am. The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's the same God that's sending you Moses. So even with all of that, Moses was still fretful and fearing. He did not want to go. He was telling God, choose somebody else. You know I am slow of speech. He had some type of speech impediment. And he was like, you've chosen the wrong guy. Please get somebody else. But God says to Moses, you're the one that I've chosen. And I will send your brother Aaron to go along with you. Aaron will be the actual mouthpiece. But you will put the words in Aaron's mouth to speak. So God teamed two brothers up. But one of the main things that I love, let me see, can I find this picture? God uh, says to Moses, what is that in your hand and we know the story the Jewish people the men they carried staffs with them everywhere they went or a rod and the Lord gave two miracles right there to Moses that would be signs when he would get down in front of Pharaoh we know that that rod the Lord told Moses cast it down and that rod turned into a serpent we know that down in Egypt, the Egyptian symbol that there were on their crowns was the cobra snake. And so their empowerment was through Satan. And so Moses is getting ready to go into great warfare, dealing with one of the princes of, of devils. And so when that rod turned into a snake, the Bible says Moses ran. But the Lord told him, go back pick it up by the tail. Now I've researched and talked to those who know some about snake. You never pick a snake up by the tail. But God was letting Moses know through my power, glory to God, you are going to overcome concerning Pharaoh. You're going to bring him down and you will be victorious because I'm sending you on this assignment and I am empowering you. That's the God that you and I serve. So he gave him that sign and we all know those of us that have studied out the 10 plagues that came to Egypt that that sign was the first one that was used when he stood before before Pharaoh. Pharaoh, uh, Moses uh, threw down his rod and turned into a serpent for those that don't remember and Pharaoh had magicians they threw down their rods and their rods turned into serpents but Moses' rod destroyed, devoured those snakes that had been manifested by by Pharaoh's magician. God was letting it be known. I'm the God with all power. Oh, hallelujah to his name. God gave Moses another sign while he was talking to him on the backside of the desert. And he had Moses put his hand in his uh, jack in his uh, clothing. Uh, they wore all the, the loose garment. Put your hand there in your garments. And when Moses pulled it out, the hand was leprous. And you know leprous was like AIDS. It was such a dreaded disease. And people People died from leprosy. And then God instructs Moses, put your hand back there in your clothing. And when he pulled it out, the hand had no leprosy on it at all. That was uh, speaking to Moses. You tried to deliver the people on your own when you killed that Egyptian through your own willpower. That was your own willpower. That was a leprous type situation. That won't work. You have to be empowered by me. Oh, Oh, glory to God. Oh, he's an awesome God tonight. So we know the story. We know how Moses went down and listen to this. One of the first uh, plagues that occurred had to do with the water. And you remember the story. God turned the water down in Egypt into blood. 
What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God was using that as a sign to all, to them on that day that he was a deliverer, but especially to us. Because we, oh glory to God, we were drawn out like Moses out of troubled waters. But through the power of the blood, we can be washed and we can be made whole. So the first sign was the water are turning into blood. Even though they did not know Jesus, Moses knew that he was coming. Moses the prophet prophesied one day. He said, there is one coming like unto me. Oh, is that powerful right there? There is one coming like unto me. A prophet, he said. And he said, he, him, you will obey. Talking to the Jewish people. And when we study that out, that prophecy uttered by Moses, he was was referring to the one coming like him, a deliverer, and his name would be Jesus. Oh, glory to God. So we know that Moses was successful. My video at the end is going to, I, I got to tell you, I just got to tell you, I have watched it probably 12 times. I have wept literally without exaggeration all the way through because since I profiled Moses in the word and saw what he went through oh my God he paid a price and when we're called out to serve him especially to the ministers the leaders of the Lord there is a price that will be paid there is a testing that you will go through because God wants to know and wants to see the anointing that he's getting ready to pour into you Will you be able to contain the anointing when the testing time comes, when the trials come, when the mouths turn up on you, when people that you love and walk with for years, all of a sudden they're shunning you because they don't understand who you are. When God makes his leaders, glory to God, God has to allow all of that to be tested. Here was Moses out here in the desert. Mom and dad weren't there, and even those in Pharaoh's household, that new mother, he had none of those were there as a support team. It was Moses and God. Oh, glory to God. Then, of course, he had his wife, Zipporah, who I want to mention quickly. I told you how she saved his life. This is so interesting to me. So, finally, Moses stops arguing with God. I'm going back to the desert now. And uh, the Lord uh, lets him know, you go. Go on your way. I'm putting you on assignment. And this is so interesting. You can read this in Exodus 2, uh, verses 21. And let me see. It's, yeah, Exodus 2 and verse 21. Make sure I'm giving you the right. Let me turn. Now, oh, that's what he said. I am, I am. I'm trying to find the passage about Zipporah and what she did and how she saved Moses' life. Of course, I could tell it, but I want to give you the scripture address. And it is in Exodus 4, verses 24, 25, and 26. And I'm just going to tell that to you. They were en route. Now, this is so interesting. Have you ever seen this? And it says in Exodus 4 and 24, And it came to pass by the way in the end, I-N-N, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Has anybody ever seen that? He's en route, going to obey God, going to Egypt. The Lord met him in the way at the end and sought to kill him. Zephyrah, who I said was a powerful blessing in the life of Moses, perceived what was wrong. The Bible says she grabbed a sharp stone, she circumcised their son, she threw the foreskin at the feet of Moses, and then she says this, she says, uh, surely a bloody husband and... Thou to me, a bloody husband, art thou to me. 
a bloody husband. In order to be a servant of God, even those that worship Jehovah God, in order to be under the umbrella of the covenant, you had to circumcise your son. Moses was en route to obey God, but had not done the basic. In order to enter into the blood covenant, circumcision is required. Now, circumcision, how does that apply to us today? New Testament believers, the circumcision is of the heart. You have to allow the word of God, the sharp stone, the word of God to cut away the old carnal nature so that God can begin to mold and make and deposit his nature on the inside. Moses had not obeyed in that one thing. And the Bible says again in Exodus 4, in 24 that God sought to kill Moses but Zipporah his wife picked up on what was missing and she said a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision that's Exodus 4 and 26 a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision Thank God for Zipporah. Glory to God. Moses would have never fulfilled his mission. And I would not be here profiling Moses because God sought to kill him. And I want us to look at that for just a moment. We must go through circumcision of the heart. So many take off even on platform trying to preach the word of God and have not obeyed God by spending time in his presence allowing him to cut away the carnal nature, allowing him to mold and make and deposit himself inside of us. For the Bible said, in the New Testament, Jesus said, we will come and make our abode in you. He wants to dwell inside of us. Oh, glory to God. He wants to empower us with the Holy Ghost, the comforter. The Holy Ghost is our teacher, and he will instruct, even as Moses would sit and instruct the people every day that what they should not do, what they should not participate in, this is what the the Holy Ghost does inside of us, the comforter and the teacher. When Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send you a comforter and he will bring to your remembrance the things that I have taught you. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord would not even allow the disciples to go forth in ministry until they went to the upper room, stayed there until they were endowed with the power of the Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue. We need that power. If we're going to stand on this battlefield, if we're going to rule and reign on this battlefield, if we're going to accomplish the blueprint in our lives that God has for us, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. So we know that Moses went down there and those ten plagues came and we know the ten miracles done by Moses. Oh my goodness. But now I'm going to take you to this music uh, video and I want to show you first because I want to point out several things that I want to be sure that you see in this music video. First you're going to see of course the great Moses as he comes out and uh, this is to me in my opinion one of the great greatest miracles of all time. Moses represents, of course, salvation. He led the people out of bondage, out of Egypt. Egypt is a type and shadow of sin. And he led them across the Red Sea into the promised land. Glory to God. So we're going to see this picture of Moses. And I want you to notice at the very, very beginning of this video, before you see this picture, Moses is talking to some of the people in the crowd. And it's almost like there is a, a, a discord going on. And I'm sure he fought much of that. Now, I know he did. 
because the Bible plainly says when he brought them out of Egypt that night, they came out, oh my goodness, six million people. They came out this huge multitude and they were excited. One of the things I want you to notice how they were decked down with jewels because the Lord had allowed them to spoil, S-P-O-I-L is the word the Bible uses, spoil the Egyptians on that night. They had to pay restitution. They gave up jewels and all types of silver and gold to these slaves that they had mistreated for so long. So you're going to notice as they're going through the Red Sea how they are decked down. So you see that picture of Moses? He's first in this little, uh, you can tell some type of argument in the video. They did it well with this video. I mean, they covered so much. And so he leaves and he turns his back on the people. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes there are voices coming that will hinder, that will stop, that will pervert the plan of God for your life. You have to be in a place to hear God. So I want you to pay attention how he stretches out that rod. Glory to God. The rod that the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? Moses stretched out that rod of many a time during those 40 years of bringing those people through that desert. I want you to know the rod is symbolic of the word of God. We have to loose the rod as we're on this battlefield. Then I want you, I think this is towards the end of the video. You see the highlighted parts, a little bit highlighted. That represents Miriam right there. Miriam was Moses' sister. And this is why I cried. Because as they were walking through that Red Sea, we know Miriam was a prophetess. We know that Miriam wrote a song after they came out of the Red Sea. In this video, they depict Miriam shaking a type of maraca and her mouth moves. She's singing a song as she walks through the Red Sea. I tell you, whatever you're walking through tonight, keep a song of praise, keep a song of worship, on your heart. Praise him in the midst of it. No matter what the circumstances look like in the natural, they're walking down in the bottom of a Red Sea with the waters congealed on either side, but she's singing a song. I want you to pay attention when you see her uh, walk through on this video. Then, oh my God, this right here is so powerful. This is why I wept through this whole video. There was a time when Moses was talking to Pharaoh before they left. Pharaoh was trying to negotiate with Moses and said, well, you just go and I, I forget all some of the negotiations, but he was trying to tell him what to leave behind. I believe it was the children. Leave your children behind. In other words, we'll keep on enslaving them and overworking them. And that's how the devil tries to negotiate with us when our children start acting up. Well, just forget about them. No, keep on praying. You stay on assignment. But this is what Moses said to Pharaoh that I love and it's depicted in this picture. Moses said to Pharaoh, not one hoof will be left behind. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know I include that even now in my prayers? Not one hoof will be left behind when I'm warfaring over my loved one. So here you see the animals and they're coming up out of the Red Sea, but they kind of get bogged down and you'll see it in the video. And these men get behind and they're pushing the animals on up out of the bed of that Red Sea. And when I saw that in the video, I thought about Moses. He said, not one hoof will be left behind. Glory to God. Then there will be this picture, and that's when I really lost it when I was watching the video. If you can see, I know it's not highlighted really good, but you'll see it in the video. This part is the casket of Joseph. Now, if you remember the story, Joseph was the first one to go down to, to into Egypt. Joseph was a prince, uh, used work there with Pharaoh, but later on the Pharaohs turned on the people of God. And Mo Joseph had already told them before he died, you are going to go up out of Egypt. God will deliver you. You see the power of prophecy. This is why we have to stay tuned to the prophetic word was being released from God's throne so that we can march in sequence with him. So he told them, when you go up, when you get out of here, you take my bones with you. And when I looked in that video and saw this casket, symbolic of Joseph's bones, oh my God. 
God. You know, I just got to tell you like we say, I just lost it. I say, God, you are an awesome God. Every dot, every jittle, how does this scripture say it? Every dot, every whatever. He just crosses all the T's and dots all the I's. When he gives us a promise, I want to encourage you to hold on to the promise. God fulfilled every prophetic utterance that had gone forth concerning his people. And he is not about to stop yet. I'm going to go right now to the, I think it's a four minute video. And watch for those pictures that I just showed you. I'll be right back to close out in prayer. When I look into your holiness and when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surround become mere shadows in the light of you and when I found the joy of reaching your heart when my will becomes enthroned in your love when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you mm -hmm. the reason I live is to worship you I worship you I worship you Oh, the reason I live is to worship you The reason we all live, Lord, is to worship you. I want to encourage you to keep on pressing. Do not give up. Do not back up. The same God that parted the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites is the same God that we serve. All power in heaven and earth is in his hands. Though circumstances seem to have you blocked in and locked in, divine intervention from him will open up your Red Sea. Keep on lifting your eyes up into the hills from whence cometh your help. Know this night that your help comes from the Lord. Know that he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Know that he delights in taking his children from victory to victory. That's the God that you and I serve. And his covenant promises are yea and amen. Hold on to Jesus. And when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all Become shadows in the light of you. I worship you. I worship you. Mm -hmm. The reason I live is to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
that speaks to me in so many ways. Oh, my God. That song, I don't know who wrote that song, but I tell you it was almost like, at least tonight, it was made for that movie clip. The song said, when I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, then all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you. That is exactly what Moses had to do. He had to look into God's holiness. He had to gaze into God's loveliness. See, he had already met with God on Mount Sinai, remember? He had received the table of stones with the word written on it. And other times that he'd gone up and met with God. And the Bible said God spoke to him face to face. Oh, glory to God. And the song says, then all things that surround me, Moses had to get in that relationship glory to God because I tell you if you focus on people and the things of this world you will miss out on that that God has assigned you to do he said then I worship you worship has to do with death do you remember when Abraham took his son uh, Isaac the promised son took him up on Mount Moriah and he said the boy and I go there to worship the boy was going to be put to death. Jesus, when worshiping Jehovah God, his father, he died. Worship has an element involved called death. We have to die out to self. So the song says, when I do all of these things, look into your holiness, gaze into your loveliness. When all things that surround me become mere shadows in the light of you, then I worship you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Tonight again, we were profiling Moses. I have learned much. I pray tonight that you have been blessed as you have looked at that and listened to some of the things that I have shared. Again, his name meant drawn out. He was drawn out of the waters in the natural. But I want you to know Jesus paid a price to draw us out of troubled waters. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. Neither let it be afraid. We have to believe in him. Father, I thank you for the teaching of this word profiling Moses. Lord God, the general of the faith. Lord God, he represented salvation. He took the people through and took them through to the other side. The same thing that Jesus did for us. I pray this night that if you have not accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, that you would pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I ask that you come into my heart, be my Savior, and be my Lord. It's just that simple. If you pray that you just entered into covenant with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you'll be with him in that place that he has gone and prepared for each one of us. But before that, you will fulfill your divine assignment on this earth. Because he has something for each one of us to accomplish in his name. This is Minister Pat Holmes. Glory to God. And I just want to thank you for joining me. And until next time, shalom.